the Nikabi Diary Season 1 illustrated book is now available in paperback. Own your copy now by clicking the link in the description box. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Season 2 of the Nakabi Diaries podcast, a platform dedicated to sharing the stories of the women behind the veil. This season, we will be speaking to more Muslim women from all walks of life as we continue to discuss their deep and intimate reasons for wearing the niqab. The Nakabi Diaries, our experiences, our perspectives, our voices. I'm your host, Samar, and thank you for listening. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, sister. How are you? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing too? Alhamdulillah, sister. Jazakallah khair for joining us today on the Naqabi Diaries. Sister Hafsa Noreen, you have been already um, a guest on our By the Pen um, podcast, which is okay. um, this, uh, the, an uh, author's podcast for Muslim women who writes. Yeah. Um, so we've already heard from you before in that series. So anybody who's listening now, if you haven't already listened to that episode, inshallah, do check it out. It's in our playlist. Um, so sister, today we're going to talk about the Naqab, obviously, but can you, for the listeners who haven't heard um, of you from you before, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do, inshallah? Okay. Jazakum Allah khairan for having me here. Um, my name is Hafsa Bint Narain. I am a stay-at-home mom. I'm a mother. I'm a wife. And I am a writer and editor as well. And recently, I'm an author. I became an author of a, an Islamic fiction book, So Air uh, Easy. Human. Alhamdulillah, 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 mashallah. Um, so, sister, can you give us some information about your Islamic background, inshallah? Mm, well, I was born Muslim. I was born in Lagos, Nigeria. And um, it's, it, it's a city in Lagos, eh, sorry, it's a city in Nigeria. And it's made up of mostly Muslims, but now, you know, with, you know, into a lot of people from other tribes and other states in Nigeria are coming in. So it's, it's mainly, it's mostly a mix of all the major religions in Nigeria now, which is Islam, Christianity, and, you know, the traditional worshiping. But anyway, I was born in a Muslim family and we weren't really conscious, so to say, when conscious Muslims, we didn't really know, you know, the do's and don'ts of the religion. We just knew, okay, we fast during Ramadan, we pray, we go for Eid and all that, but we didn't, we didn't practice so much. I'll, I'll say that we didn't really practice so much. So, but we knew we we're Muslims. We were Muslims. We accepted that fact, but not really practicing or conscious Muslims at all. On the last. So can you can you give us some insight on how did you go from that to being a sister who wears the niqab? Um, alhamdulillah, it was, I would say it's just the mercy of Allah because um, I started wearing the niqab when I was in school, in university. Okay. And prior to that, I, I you know, like I said before, I wasn't a conscious Muslim by any standard. But before that, I had so uh, three elder sisters. I still have them. One of them is late. But my sisters had, you know, gained admission to school already then. So they also started, you know, learning about the dean then. So they... Okay, were they studying hijab. Islamic courses? No, no. In school, in universities, we have, you know, bodies. There's a very popular one, MSS and the Muslim Student Society of Nigeria right. has branches mm -hmm. um, in schools all over Nigeria. So, mm -hmm. you know, they organize lectures, programs for Muslim students. So mm -hmm. as long as, so as soon as you get admission into um, into um, university and, you know, you, fam you make yourself, um, you know, familiar with the mosque, you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're an automatic member mm -hmm. of um, MSSN. So they, they went for lectures and then, then just Islamic lectures at the mosque. And, you know, they started learning about, you know, the pristine Islam and they started wearing hijab. So my point with, uh, my point uh, of saying this is that 
then I wasn't in school, then I was still in high school and all that. But I was familiar with the hijab. It was from my sisters that mm -hmm. I got familiar with hijab, really. And but I didn't wear it then. Even my my other sister that I said is late now, she started wearing the niqab then. So but still I still didn't wear it then, not until I also in admission into school and using not wearing hijab really was not an issue with our parents at all so mm -hmm. it's but when i got to school and i also you know started um attending lectures at the mosque and all that i there was a day i still remember that day clearly now but i do not re really remember the what the lecture was about but we're at the mosque and i don't know allah just inspired me to turn to my friend and tell her that after we leave this lecture, I'm going, take me to where you buy materials I want to sew and hijab. Mashallah. And she took me there, I started wearing hijab. And I think maybe a year later, I think, I'm not sure, I started wearing the niqab. I just, I so just... How did you get information about the niqab? Was it something that you saw um, a lot in Nigeria, like with other sisters? Like I said before, I said my sister, even before I got into school, my other sister, one of my sisters started wearing the niqab. Um, oh, right. So okay. I knew, I knew, I knew a little about it. And we see some sisters as well um, in, you know, we see them uh, wearing the niqab. So it's not something that I, I've ne I'd never seen before. I'd never... I didn't know about it's not something that I didn't know about it's just something that I just didn't choose to do it was something that I didn't understand mm -hmm. really and I didn't I, I didn't even care I didn't wasn't it was it wasn't on my list of priorities to do so yeah, um, when you but you said that you mentioned that one of your other sisters has started to wear it so yes when your sister had started to wear it do you think that mm -hmm. made it was there was there any kind of issues in your family like from your parents that was that was there any concern from them that they actually had started to wear the niqab and do you think that her wearing the niqab made it easier for you to do so mm, it's she when she started wearing it, it, it was it was war zone at home because it, my parents they didn't they didn't they weren't accepting of it. So but then despite the fact that I wasn't wearing it, or I wasn't, you know, you know, as siblings, we we group together and you know where we have each other's back so it i wasn't resentful of her of what she was doing really i supported her then actually but my parents weren't you know they weren't accepting of it and even when i started wearing it as well it was the same story it was the same story my my even my sister had to drop out of school really because at school she it was she also faced a lot of you know oppression and she had to drop out of school so it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't easy and my parents didn't even like the fact that she got into school started wearing a cob and she had to drop out of school because of the niqab so it wasn't it wasn't a joke it wasn't something easy at all but alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So um, what about you? When you started wearing it, did it, how how was it for you in when you, while you was going to school wearing the niqab? How, was it? You, did you face similar challenges? Yes, I did. I did. I think oh, out of if we want to look at it, like majority of um, Muslim sisters in Nigeria who wear the niqab and you know are going to school in um, universities, especially in the southwestern part. Uh, the eastern part, they they usually face these um, challenges. Um, when I started wearing the niqab um, in my department, they you know they made the law and were like you know we had series of you know sessions you know meeting the HODs and meeting the VC and all that and talking about how the niqab is not something that's in the school constitution and all that. But later they were like, I can't wait in the department. So I didn't used to wait in the in the department. But when I'm in the on the school grounds and um, 
every other every other place in school I could wear it, but not into the department because they just didn't want it. Yeah, subhanallah. So, so, so you just so that's what you did to finish your course then? Yes, yes, that's what I did to finish my course. Alhamdulillah. So have you suffered any abuse for wearing the niqab at all? Abuse, abuse from, you know, outsiders or people like strangers that I don't know, right? Yeah, just anybody. Yes, just anybody. Oh, a lot, a lot. You know, I get oh, wow. called. It's a name that, uh, you know, almost every niqabi in Nigeria would have been called. It's it's igungun and it means masquerade. You know, they, we have these oh, wow. um, traditional... Um, you know, masquerades in Nigeria. They they wear they wear clothes that covers them from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. So and they, they are traditional, you know, um, nonsense. So people call us that. Some people call us um, ninjas. You know, you get some people out uh, just you know try to pull you on a cob off your face. Some people just know. you know give you unsolicited advice and go like, why are you wearing that? There was a time. I was, um, I, there are so many stories, I can't even start going um, into it. There was a time I was at a, you know, I was at the train station mm -hmm. and this woman just walks up to me and goes like, why are you wearing this? It's, are you sure you're, you, it's your choice to wear it? Like she's going to be the person that needs to save me from uh, <laughs> the perceived cell, that. the perceived jail I'm in. And I just, I just told her yes, and she, she walked out. I was like, what was she going to do if I said no? If I said no, what mm -hmm. was she going to do? She had called the police or something. So there are a lot of, you see people just, you know, spit at you. I mean, different things, but Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. I mean, it's something that the Prophet, you, what I, you know, console myself with is that the Prophet went through much worse. So how much more me? So I just, it hurts, but Alhamdulillah, I just try to chuck it up and go on to the next one. Hoping for a reward from Allah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. So um, you mentioned to me in, in, in the, when I spoke to you about your book that you live in, in Portugal. So have you done traveling with wearing the niqab? Yes, yes. And how was that experience? Alhamdulillah, it was, it was all right from the AM at the airport, excuse me, at the airport, you know, they're always like, they don't know who this is. But Alhamdulillah, I had people who were you know understanding so whenever they wanted to see my face you just take me outside mm. and you know check is my that, face is that in life. portugal or um other countries in um nigeria okay in nigeria uh, from the nigerian um airport mm -hmm. and at um, the airport in um portugal as well okay so and i was fortunate to have um female attendants then both at the um, at the airport, so Alhamdulillah uh, made it easy, you know. Well, Alhamdulillah, it would have gone much worse, I do, but Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And so you, you've lived in both countries, Portugal and Nigeria. Which place would you say was easier for you as an Akadi woman? Hmm. It's, it's hard to say, really. I would say it's easier in Nigeria mm -hmm. because in terms of, uh, because um, we have, there are a lot of Muslims in Nigeria yeah, and you have sisters that are wearing a club, you know, there's the community is there, the Muslim community, you see people like you, you're not the only one that is wearing it. You have emotional support, you have, you know, you're amongst Muslims, but here, Although I've never had anyone, you know, walk up to me and tell me anything bad about my dressing. No, mm -hmm. but, you know, get the stairs, obviously. The stairs are like, because I'm like a stranger. It's, I've not seen anyone here that is wearing um, what I'm wearing. So mm -hmm. they, they are, there are stairs, but I've never had anyone come to me and, you know, go like, why are you wearing this? And 
no, no, no. I've only got people that are curious, people that ask me oh, where I'm from, am I a Muslim? And I even had a, a very, very long conversation with um, a man one day. Totally, it was a stranger. He just walked up to me and started talking, started talking about Islam. So I've not, ha I've not had anyone come to me and, you know, say anything bad about what I'm wearing. But I would say that it's easier because in terms of, you know, community support, having a community you know, for support and, you know, just having a community to be with, mm. it's easier in Nigeria than here because we don't have so many Muslims here. Yeah. We don't so, have so many Muslims. So, so, so you meant on that note, what is, what is the Muslim community in Portugal like then? Have you managed to meet some people? I mean, even though you don't see a lot of Muslims around, have you, have you managed to meet some other Muslims there where you are that you can kind of have, you know, a relationship with and you know contact yes 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 we have i've, I've met um, some pakistan people from other countries like mm -hmm. from bangladesh from pakistan and we have some nigerian friends here as well who are muslims so we it's we, we we are not it's not so much we are not so much but it's it's just enough we don't have where i live we don't even have a mosque but we just come together oh, wow. somewhere to pray and to pray Juma and um, you know eat. If you want to really you know pray, we have to go to another um, city. But there is a Muslim, um, there is a mosque in uh, the capital city in Lisbon. There's a very very yes. big mosque mm -hmm. that um, people can go to. I don't know about the Muslim community there mm. because I, I've not really had any so how far um, is, occasion how far to be is there. it from where you are then uh, it's about a two hour two hour train ride wow two hour Allah. train ride mm. so subhanallah so um on that note would you say that you feel the niqab is a barrier and if so in which sense I've I've never viewed the niqab as a barrier uh, except I'm not understanding what you mean. A barrier to, you know, achieve any goals that I have. Is that well, what you in, mean? In any sense, in any sense. Okay, in any sense. Huh? No, I don't think of it as a barrier, except for the fact that it is a barrier for, you know, um, any unwanted um, advances or whatever I, I know you understand what i mean yes yes, uh, yes. as far regards what mm -hmm. Allah said in the mm -hmm. quran but i don't think it's a it's a barrier i don't see it as a barrier because i just put it on and i feel complete i feel i feel good when i wear it and i feel that it's it gives me <laughs> the freedom as opposed to what people think that I'm oppressed and they are the ones that are free. I don't think it's a barrier. We see uh, to achieve goals because we see um, a lot of Muslim women in Muslim countries. We see, Muslim, we see Nikobi doctors, we see Nikobi pilots, we see Nikobi lawyers. So the, and the Nikob doesn't, or the Nikob has not stopped them from achieving what they want to achieve. So I don't see the Nikob as a barrier at all. I can do whatever I want to do. Um, despite the niqab so as long as it's fine as long as it's within islamic um, boundaries of course so no i do not think the niqab is a barrier in any sense so ha have you met other sisters who would really like to wear the niqab but they're not allowed and or or have you met sisters who have been forced into wearing it like that lady had asked you have, have you met sisters who've been forced or sisters who aren't allowed to wear it uh yes i have met sisters who are not allowed to wear it. I myself am a case study and also um, my sister. Um, but when I was in school too, I had friends who wanted to wear it, but you know, they were met with strict, harsh opposition from their parents. I had sisters whose, um, um, whose parents just took their stockpile of um, hijabs and burnt it to the ground. Oh, I had wow. sisters. Jesus, he actually burnt them. Burnt the niqab, uh, burnt the niqabs and hijabs. Yes, I had sisters. Oh, wow. I had sisters who, whose parents, you know, employed spies. Had spies, you know, um, watch the what their kids are doing in school, so that wow. the spies report to them, and then they they come to the school and just you know try to 
you know, disgrace the sisters. A lot of, a lot of, sorry, I had sisters whose parents came to school and just, you know, took off their, uh, their cobs right there and then. So it's, it's, it really is a struggle. It really is a struggle for some sisters who want to wear it, but are facing opposition from their parents. Mm. SubhanAllah. Not what, would you, what do you what do you what do you what do you think those parents are afraid of or what do you think is making them have this kind of um you know perception like negative kind of perception towards the niqab hmm. i linking it to the question you asked before about if i see the niqab as a barrier mm-hmm. i think these parents believe that the niqab is a barrier that will stop their girls from reaching their full potential, from mm-hmm. getting the education, from getting the jobs that they are supposed to get. Because let's face it, you know, I mentioned earlier that in school, you see sisters, almost every Nekobi sister that has passed through university, it's almost 85% of them will tell you they had challenges at school mm. wearing the Nekobi. So coupled with that, when you get out, uh, uh, coupled with that fact, when you get out to when you get out of university and then you want to enter the workforce, you get people, you know, telling you that you can't wear this because you can't do this because you're wearing the niqab. You can't do that because you're wearing the niqab. You can't do this because you're wearing the niqab. So it's basically that's what the parents think, and they believe that they've um invested a lot in the job because this this um, point i'm making now is something that is really really how do i put it it's ingrained in it's deep rooted in our um society really especially from where i'm from i'm yoruba i'm from the southwestern part of nigeria and people are like people believe that um they have children so that when they get old, the children can take care of them. Mm. They'll pay back what the parents have, you know, invested in them. Yeah. So the the parents may be afraid. That may also be a fear that they may be afraid that after they've, you know, invested and done everything for the child, child now is now is now deciding not to work and pay back what um, what's been invested yeah, so it's basically it. those and another one is some people believe that cis women that wear the cup have been in, initiated into a cult yeah. <laughs> a muslim cult and they call that they are that's what they're afraid of really some of them are afraid of that that um some of these women have been initiated into a cult that would you know make them turn their backs on their parents so they don't want any part of it so those are some of the fears I think um, some of these parents have. Subhanallah. Because so it's not like any... they are not Muslims. Okay. okay. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. It's so not like you... they are not Muslims. They just don't want it because yeah. of. Subhanallah. Have you met any sisters who have been forced to wear the niqab then? No, I haven't. Okay. I haven't met any sisters. Okay. Subhanallah. So um, what would you advise to any Muslim who is thinking about wearing the niqab but she feels not like I'm confident to wear it? Mm. Um, I would advise that she should just, you know, make istikhara and talk to Allah about it because in the end it's between you and Allah. Just pray, make it um, do is the color. and if it's really something that um, you feel is right for you, then you can do it. Because even if you wear the niqab or you do not wear the niqab, you still one will still get trials. Okay, yeah, so of course, yeah. if you trials in life are a, a constant, so it's it's not something that. You'll be like, if you don't wear the niqab, this will not happen to me. If I didn't wear the niqab, this will not happen to me. No. If you believe that you want to wear it and you feel that it's right for you, just take the step and Allah will um, guide you. Allah will guide you through and be there for you. And 
So, sister, would you would you say that it was easy for you to work in a car? But like in terms of practicality as well, like when you because you, you, you said that when you wanted to wear the hijab, you asked your friend where you can buy material so you could sew your yes. own hijab. Did you also sew yes. your own niqab as well when you decided uh, to wear it, or did there was a place that you could just go and buy them? Yes, yes, we have um, um, places that we can buy ready-made niqab. We can also ask. Um, uh, tell us to also sew yeah. um, uh, niqabs for us as well. So it was easy. I I just, you know, I believe that if you want to, when you, you know, you really feel like wearing it, you really want to wear it, it won't be hard. You won't think of it as hard because mm -hmm. I, I can't, I can't bring any memory to, uh, no memory comes to mind of it being hard for me to you know wear or put on so no it's it was it was it wasn't hard at all it's, okay, it's like, been easy alhamdulillah yeah because I'm, I'm asking especially because obviously nigeria is in africa and it's quite hot so oh. from, from that kind of from that sense like how what's the kind how does it feel like wearing it in hot conditions like that because you know people who are listening that maybe live in the west of the country where yes. they have the more like variation in the weather you know, they yeah, think, well, okay, how can you okay, wear that yes. when it's so hot? Mm. Uh, alhamdulillah, it's, it's not hard, really. It's hard, it's hard, yes, because sometimes you can't breathe, sometimes you are, you feel like you're suffocating and all that. But I believe when you, you get used to it, when you get used to breathing through the cloth, and the cloth is not as... You know as thick as people think it's yeah. it is light you can it's breathable it's made of breathable uh, material so it's uh, I, you when you wear it when you start wearing it and you know you get used to it you uh, you'll get used to it actually you get used to the the heat the heat really so alhamdulillah so um, finally, sister, to end the interview, I'll ask you, what does the niqab mean to you? Okay. Hmm. What does the niqab mean to me? It, to me, it represents my faith, basically. It represents um, my relationship with Allah and it represents my faith really to me to me that's just what it is it's something that it's a cloth that i wear to you know not to, to show that i'm muslim really and it's i, I think i mentioned it before it's liberating really <laughs> you know, to wear the niqab and, you know, not be, you know, not be subject to the, the whims of society or mm -hmm. what is, what people expect women to be or look like. I am subject to Allah's um, commandments, to Allah's injunctions. So it's, 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 the niqab represents that for me. It's my, statement of freedom so to say i just put it that way alhamdulillah. so alhamdulillah, sister. that's what it means to me so actually i forgot to even ask you about your the work that you do because you mentioned that you're a writer and an editor okay. and an author so yes. for those who haven't heard your episode of by the pen um can you tell us about you know about what you do okay um i'm a writer Mm -hmm. and uh, recently an author of a book to air is human and i'm also an editor i edit um manuscripts for uh, for people basically so yes that's what i do mashallah, mashallah. so uh, you're self-employed then ah uh, yes i am self-employed and how long have you been doing that mm, since 2017 yes Okay, oh, yes. mashallah. And um, is, is, while being a mother and a wife as well, and uh, yes, so was you living in uh, Portugal when you started doing the um, being like doing your author and writing your yes. books and everything? Yes, yes. I recently just moved to Portugal then, and okay. I needed um, to do something here because you know this 
it's the language is different <laughs> you know, the culture and everything is different and i really you know needed something to do so aside from my duties my primary duties of course so i just i started writing and sharing my my stories and training to be an editor and all that Mashallah. so yes it was after i moved here to portugal so um are you, have you been learning portuguese as well sister yes yes i'm, doing I'm taking portuguese classes good mashallah that's very good <laughs> alhamdulillah so um where can people um get hold of your writing like where can people review your writing or get hold of your book oh okay the book um is available on um all the major books um book retailers like amazon and it's available on um, as an ebook and as um paperback as well okay much and much good. my other um writings can also be um assessed on my website uh com. i'll give you um the details the links after the um um, yes, after inshallah. we get get up this call, inshallah. Inshallah. So, um, yes. you, what is just to just to let the viewers and um, the listeners um know what kind of genre do, do your books um and your writing cover? I like to write Islamic fiction, Islamic realistic <laughs> Islamic fiction. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to you know create characters that are not perfect because we are not perfect, and and in creating those characters, I believe that people will be able to relate more with them instead of you know just seeing characters that do good all the time and cannot do anything wrong but i'd rather create a character that is flawed just like all of us are mm -hmm. so that people will be able to relate and you know get the message uh, inherent in the um, in the stories alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So now, inshallah we'll put everything in the description box for the listeners to be able to view and um, take a look for themselves inshallah but it's been really really lovely talking to you again today sister i really yeah. thank you for your time and um i hope that all goes well with your um your future authoring and writing no. and everything inshallah Jazakallah khairan. it was really nice speaking to you Jen. thank you right, for having me on the show <laughs> thank you thank you for agreeing to do the interview Jazakallah khair. thank you so much assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.